Hi, this is an update to my RHCSA live video course. My name is Sander van Vught and this update is about GPT petitions. So I'm going to explain how you can create GPT petitions on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7. So let's talk about GPT petitions and how to create them. On old systems you had MBR and in MBR you could create just four petitions. Uh, three primary, one extended, and in the extended you could create a limited amount of logical petitions. That is because in the master boot record, which was 512 bytes only, there's limited space to store petition information. On modern systems we have GUID petition tables, uh, let's say GUID petition tables. GUID petition tables allow you to address disks that are bigger than 2 terabytes. And there is more space to store the petitions in, which means that the amount of petitions that you can create is much, much larger in GWT, up to 255. And there is also a new utility to, to create GWT-based petitions. So in the old days you were used to doing FDisk, now we do GDisk, GDisk for GWT-based petitions. So let's do it on DevSDB. What you can see here is that it is scanning and it's proposing to create new GPT entries. That's fine with me. So let's do N. Or even better, let's do question mark. Because question mark shows you the interface that you're working from. And what you can see here is that it looks a lot like uh, what you're used to in FDisk. Basically it's very simple. If you have ever worked with FDisk, you know how to do GDisk as well. <coughs> I'm sorry. So if you want to add a new petition, it's always a good idea to start by doing P to print the current petition table. What you can see here is that the disk has a GUID, uh, a, U, uh, a UID uh, that is unique for the disk. And if you want to create a new petition, let's do N. It shows you that you can create up to 128 petitions. And by default, it wants to create petition number one. So let's do that. First sector, well it makes sense to use the default 2048 which leaves one megabyte for metadata. So let's just press enter. And next you can specify the, the last sector or the size that you want to use for the petition. This is a small demo disk of one gigabytes only. So I don't mind uh, allocating all. By default if you don't select anything uh, you will allocate all available disk space. Next it tells us that the current type is a Linux file system and that will be good in most cases. If it's not, you can type L to see which file system types are available. Well, file system type is not the good word which petition types are available. Because a Linux file system doesn't tell the system if you are going to use exe4 or xfs or whatever kind of Linux based petition. You can see that the petition types are a little bit longer now. So just type the long petition uh, type if you want to create a specific petition type, which I'm not going to do here. So I'm just going to press enter. And next we can do P to see that the petition has successfully be been created. So we need to, to do W to write that. But before I do that, be aware of uh, what we're doing here. You can create up to 128 entries. Did I just say 255? That was wrong. 128 is the amount of petitions that you can create. Now what we can see here, it's about to write GPT data. This will overwrite existing petitions. That's fine with me. So do you want to proceed? Absolutely. Now if the disk was previously in use, you need to do part probe. Part probe on dev sdb will update the kernel and inform it about the new petition that you have just created. And now you can move on and use it like any other petition uh, that you have ever used before. So creating a file system that doesn't change uh, as compared to the old way of doing it. And there we go, put it in fstep and you've got yourself a nice GWT based petition that you can start using. That's all. It wasn't hard, was it?